Congress has less than a week to avoid a partial government shutdown. But lawmakers are now hoping to put off the problem until March. NBC News has learned House and Senate leaders have agreed to a single short-term continuing resolution. The deal extends the funding deadlines to March 1st and March 8th and maintains the $1.59 trillion top line from the Fiscal Responsibility Act that raised the debt ceiling last spring. But the far-right Freedom Caucus is already rebelling against this plan. I'm comfortable with not funding the government if, if they're going to continue to let this border run wide open. Might there be a temporary pause in non-essential government operations? I've said many times over, certainly don't fear that happening. And instead of trying to keep the lights on, House Republicans are pursuing a flurry of baseless impeachments. Just this week, the Homeland Security Committee voted to initiate impeachment proceedings against DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. And Republicans say Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Attorney General Merrick Garland could be next. Joining me now in studio in her Delta Red, Democratic Congresswoman Yvette Clark of New York. She's a member of the Homeland Security Committee. Congresswoman Clark, thank you very much for coming on the Saturday show. Well, let's start with the budget negotiations. What do you, what do you think of this agreement that's been agreed to by the leaders to kick the can down the road to March 1st and March, March 8th? It, it, it's shameful. I mean, we made an agreement last year at, that needed to be adhered to. Uh, the integrity of the body is, is, is really compromised by this extreme MAGA Republicans on, on Capitol Hill. There's nothing uh, that they won't do uh, to disrupt the lives of the American people so that they can claim victory, um, which indeed it's not. So am I hearing, so does that mean if slash when that bill comes to the floor, you will or you won't vote for well, it? Well, you know, I'm going to uh, take my cues from Leader Jeffries. Uh, he's in the room. He's negotiating. He knows the next steps uh, that will make sure that we navigate the American people safely through this gauntlet mm -hmm. that these uh, extreme MAGA Republicans have, have laid down. So, uh, you know, we will see what comes to the floor mm -hmm. next week. OK, so let's say what comes to the floor next week, it, it hits the floor. We already know the House Freedom Caucus it doesn't like it. Um, and in order for it to pass, as other yes. budget agreements have passed, it requires Democratic votes. Let's say you are among the Democrats who vote for it, which means that a motion to vacate is then put on the floor. Would you vote to save Speaker Johnson if it came to that? Again, I, I take my cues from our leadership. We have been extremely disciplined as a Democratic caucus. Uh, he knows uh, the ins and outs of what uh, both the Republican caucus is, is cooking up and certainly the direction we need to lead the American people in. And so I'll be taking my cues from our from our leader. Mm -hmm. So you're on the Homeland Security Committee, and we know that se the folks over in the Senate are, are um, negotiating a, a, a bill, a border bill, an immigration bill that would deal with border policy, including potentially uh, expediting deportation of, of undocumented immigrants. Um, no one really knows what's in it just yet. Are there things you absolutely could not vote for that could emerge in a Senate deal? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about um, uh, the dismantling of, of asylum mm -hmm. uh, in the United States. Uh, we, we see what's going on around the world. That we are facing a, a migrant crisis here on our southern border, but there's not a nation uh, in Europe um, and globally that is not seeing these migration flows. This is something that is challenging the globe at this moment. But we, the United States of America, have had a tradition, a noble tradition, of welcoming immigrants to our shores. I think we need to fix the broken immigration system. And what the uh, extreme MAGA Republicans are doing, once again, is trying to create uh, even more of a crisis by not negotiating and bringing our country into the 21st century with an immigration system that will work, that will work for this generation and future generations to come. Well, one of the things they're focused on, instead of what you're talking about, is impeaching the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, he's agreed to testify before Congress, um, just not next Thursday when they want him to testify, because he's going to be meeting with 
Mexican officials, I'm sure, to talk about what's happening at the border. The Homeland Security chair wrote back, and I want to quote, he says, it is deeply troubling that Secretary Mayorkas has refused the committee's multiple requests to appear. What's the chair's motive? Yeah, uh, how, how disingenuous. I mean, at the end of the day, this is all about uh, political theater, uh, gotcha politics. Uh, what, what these folks are trying to do is an imp impeach the Secretary of Homeland Security, not for treason, not for high crimes and misdemeanors, not for bribery, but for policy disagreements. Come on. You know, this is, again, political theater. Uh, these folks take uh, clips from our hearings and raise money from it. The, the country deserves better. And there's no doubt in my mind that Secretary Mayorkas wants to appear before the committee. They just have to negotiate the time and the date. There's, there's been no evidence that the secretary w doesn't want to appear before the committee. It seems to me that every time he's been asked to go to Capitol Hill, he goes to Capitol Hill. Absolutely. We've had him in our hearings on uh, multiple occasions already. And so I think that, again, this is very disingenuous um, of, of, our, of, of the chairman of the committee, uh, Mr. Green, uh, to, 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 to in any way indicate that uh, the secretary is not willing to come. I mean, it still just kind of cracks me up that they're saying he doesn't want to testify when he is going to have a meeting with somebody who can help deal with what they say they they care about. Again, but they want to be obstacles to this. They want to obstruct the ability for us to actually meet the crisis and deal with it and, and move forward as a nation. This crisis is, is something that they feel uh, will in, in empower them in, in, in electoral politics. Right. This is not governance. Right, exactly. It's electoral politics, not governance. That is Congresswoman Yvette Clark. As a, Thank you so much for coming to the Saturday show. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. And to my sores of DST, happy Founders Day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.